the forwards Wesley, Ferner, Hetherington, Lomax, Walters and Pongia. Coaches Tim Sheens. And now the St George Dragons. This great club. They've played in over 100 finals matches in their history. And they start today as underdogs. And they have made a change to their starting lineup selected on Tuesday night. You can see the 16 there. Jeff Hardy is in for Nathan Brown. That's their side. Raper, Walford, Coyne the captain. Bell, Brunker, Mundine, Goldthorpe, Bartram, Goulet, Barnhill, Felsch, Hardy and Stevens. David Waite, the St George coach and very much a contender for coach of the year. Sideline duties for this match. Number two of the final series. Steve Roach, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Andrew. Beautiful and mild conditions down here on the sideline. A slight breeze behind Canberra in the first half. The breeze will come from the north. You boys are talking about matchups. I can't wait to see Laurie Daly and uh, Anthony Mundine in this game. But Canberra for mine, too much pace out wide. None better than Nagus running the full back, the, the football back. And Nandruku, four tries last week. And Daly, as a leader, will lead from the front. Canberra for mine. I think there's any dispute in the box or tipping a Raiders victory. Kelvin Jeffs, the man in charge. David Manson was the referee in last night's match. And Wayne Bartram it will be to get us underway. Game two is now in progress. And the Raiders with Daly. And St George defence coming in. You must understand the crowd predominantly. St George supporters is now Lomax. They come up in numbers. First up there was Jason Stevens. Now away for Hetherington. Gets beyond the 20 metre line. And Luke Felsch, one of two players playing his first first grade final in the Dragons lineup. The other is Dean Raper. Now Wesley. Wearing that dreaded 13 jumper for the Canberra Raiders. Daly gets something going on the short side. Almost through the tackle of Stevens. They're on the 40 metre line and they've used up five tackles. The kick they had a bit of pressure there it was steve walters who ended up with the kick and dean raper gets back this players getting in steve walters way there but that's the the lovely quality of laurie daly's performance he's a 58 some 58 you don't see touch the football for 10 minutes two touches in the first set of six and he'll be looking to get involved defensively as soon as possible as well gold for through wide ball it's bartram over halfway getting across his nagus and bartram gets inside the 20 and has lost the football it has gone over the sideline, but the long ball from Goldthorpe. Now the touch judge is in. But first line break to the Dragons. And so simple the break as well. Wayne Bartram pirouetting through the line, coming out the other side. It was quite a difficult ball to take, and if anything, that might have put off David Boyle and Laurie Daly. Nagus coming across on Bartram. Looks as though the tackle is completed. The ball comes out late. I just think he's lost that cold. I can't see why the, the touch judge is on unless there was some... Invo involvement with Boyle pulling back players trying to support let's have a look Boyle there with the yeah he's got Mark Bell just a little bit of a nudge a little bit of a nudge is all it was certainly no more than that it was almost a grab that was unsuccessful but enough to catch the eye of the touch judge it was probably just as well he did grab him coming across in cover defense with Steve Stone who in fact collided with the referee he was making ground up on Bell, and I think as soon as Boyle saw that, uh, he had to take the odds to, to pulling on uh, on Bell's jump. You'll see Bartram there actually spins to come through that hole. You see Stone roll over the referee there, been back play. Boyle realises they're in trouble. Bell, a much quicker player. He just gave him a little nudge there to keep him away from the ball. In the meantime, time off has been called. Can you believe there's no sand for Wayne Bartram? There is some, but not quite enough. He's had a very good year, Wayne Bartram. His goal kicking this year has been an improvement of what we've seen in previous seasons. The success rate is pretty good, but his form in general play has, has been great. I saw him scouting out wide as he will do for much of this game and attack on the blind side. He likes getting on the short side and getting against defenders one on one. Very strong runner. Well, by no means an easy kick for the first one for the day. It is 27 metres out. It is 10 metres in from touch. Three minutes gone. Wayne Bartram looking for first points. Here it goes in flight. It looks pretty good from Bartram. First points to the Dragons. The fans love it. They lead by two points to nil. 
It was a nice warning shot from St George. I mean, you would expect Canberra the side to move the ball wide early and St George to play it a little solid in the forwards, but that's just a reminder of the Canberra side that they are prepared to tack on the edges. Uh, good work there from St George early in the game. Restart from Daly. It is a deep one. It might almost go out on the full. Picked up oh. by Ricky Walford. That's a great take. Well, it was almost a, a last-second thought from Ricky Walford. I'll take this one on the full. He got it around his ankles. Ricky Walford, fingertip control. And now the Dragons inside their 20. And Daly coming up over the top. That matchup is with Mundine. He's the man he made the tackle on. Now Barnhill. You could wait the coach saying Barnhill had been in doubt for much of the week. He got the back slam in that tackle. Gula. Last tackle now for the Dragons. They've had little ground in this set of six. Goldthorpe will have the kick. The pressure came from Stone. And it comes to Nagus. Who do they kick to? With the, the likes of Nagus and Nandruku in the back line for Canberra. Good chase on that first kick from Mark Bell. And now he's conceded a penalty. Mark Bell, a former Raider, as is David Barnhill. Canberra inside St George territory. This is Lomax. Very impressive last week against the South Queensland Crushers. Almost a forward ball there from Walters to Pongia. And again, St George have conceded the penalty. This one is almost in front of the posts. I think the fact that Kelvin Jeffs has walked over towards the post means that they will take the kick at goal. David Ferner. Now almost centre forward. He's about in front of the, the right hand up right. He would have been over close to the sideline. Canberra may have been tempted to kick for touch, despite the fact they trailed by two. You can see how well that the Canberra forwards are going when they can leave Luke DeVico on the bench. He's been outstanding for them in a troubled year. Of course, both front rowers Ponga and Lomax have had quite a few weeks on the sideline through suspension, and DeVico's really taken on the chief role is their front row and done a great job. It's funny how things work out for you. I mean, those suspensions might be a blessing when you get down to sudden death football week in, week out in September. The fact they've had a spell, that may work well work in Canberra's favour. Tally for Ferner of 138 points. He's ninth on the list of point scorers. Ferner, the first kick. He struck that just as well as Bartram. We're all locked up at two all. Six minutes gone at the Sydney Football Stadium. Welcome back to the stadium to all. The Raiders and the Dragons. Goal to both Wayne Bartram and David Ferner. And now Lomax. So the Canberra Raiders conceding that early goal. And almost a high tackle there from Bartram. A little untidy as Steve Alders from dummy half. He offloads a loose ball. St George, can they pounce? They can't. Wesley comes up with it. And Stone along for Daly. He's played... Most of the year outside of Steve Stone. That's the man, Ricky Stewart. Injured much earlier. That started a run of outs as Wesley bounced away. Now for Hetherington. Almost a halfway. Felsch was the tackle. Last year for the Raiders. Stone kicking back to the centre field. Many of the chases are offside. Walford gets there. Not so Nandruku. He was onside. Really putting the pressure on Ricky Walford. And there's a collaring tackle from Mullins. Well, he's going to be penalised. And that shake of the head, I think, says it all from Brett Mullins. The dummy half got out fairly quickly. Dean Raper. It was just a slap across the face there from Brett Mullins. A clumsy tackle. It is high. needs to be penalised. But obviously not placed on report for something like that. No golf ball should find touch around the halfway line. Well, <laughs> forget that. Say 15 metres short of the halfway line. Barnhill with a free kick, and it is Stevens who carries forward. St George just short of halfway. Hardy on the blind side for Barnhill. It pops loose to Stevens. Was he offside? He was. So on tackle number two, not only do they lose possession, they hand a penalty to Canberra. David Barnhill just having a look at the opposition defence coming at him. 
spilt the ball. Daly, well, can you believe that? Has not found touch. Tremendous take from young Dean Raper on his own 20 metre line. Steve Walters breaks the ball back. So some simple mistakes being made from both teams. Oh, getting the full gamut there. The right back in the play the ball. And St George had got the ball back. Now Walters away for Stone. Stone, Hetherington, they miss out him. Ferner, in of the tackle. With Bell. He caught up quickly. Read the cutout ball. 30 metres out from the Dragons line. Now Stone, a show of the ball to Pongia. And Hardy and Barnhill with the tacklers. Walters for Daly. Now Wesley. All wrapped up in the centres. He, he needed to be too by Mark Coyne. This is his comeback match. Mark Coyne has now it slipped for Nangruku. Inside the 20. Last tackle for the Canberra Raiders. Daly is standing back out of the line. Now kicking high, Laurie Daly. Raper under pressure at his own in goal. Answers the challenge. And will come back to the 20. Anthony Mundine. He has to go it alone and does a good job of it. Made 15 metres. Now Bartram. Ooh, taken over the top there from Hetherington and he's connected. Well, I think he may have got him flush across the face. Bartram a little slow to his feet. Yeah, this was one he could have pulled out of, Brett Hetherington. You see it here on replay. Bartram going across the field, just showing the ball on his chest. That's a swing over the top. Yeah, there's no doubt Brett Hetherington will be placed on report for this one. He he lined him up from a long way away, and it was, it was a fairly nasty one. He hasn't made real good connection with it, but I think there was an intent there to come over the top. Pretty ordinary start by both these sides, just the same. I mean, in the space of 30 seconds there, we had a, a penalty for a high tackle, a, a poor kick for touch, a drop ball, a fail to find touch, and then a rake back in the play of the ball. That just might get both sides fired up now to settle down. So ten and a half gone. And Luke Felsch certainly involved in all the heavy work early. Hardy. Uh, with gold for. Now on for Stevens. And pushed back by the Canberra defence. He's lost the football. So Stone comes up with it on tackle two. Another early turnover. Ferner taken by Bartram. They're offside. Inside the ten, says Jeffs. This is a real stop-start affair. They were yards offside. That that just recognised the urgency in the St George defence on turnovers. Canberra are a fairly methodical side who just walk the ball away in general play, and they really thrive on those drop balls or poor kicks uh, to, to unleash their skill, and St George were aware of that. As soon as they dropped the ball, they are up in their face, prepared to give the penalty. And at that time, we saw Felsch go high on Pongia. Walters. St George again coming up very quickly out of the line with Lomax. And 35 metres out from the Dragons line. Stone, long pass from dummy half for Daly. Then the ball for Mullins. Inside, great hands, Nagus. It's caught forward. It was very good hands from Ken Nagus and Laurie Daly realising that there was an umbrella shape against him in defence if he could get Brett Mullins on the outside of his man. Some open space. See the cutout pass. Cross in front of Mark Coyne, who recovered fairly well. And just beautiful work from Ken Nagus there. He contested that was forward. As the Dragons win the scrum with Raper. Steve Roach on the sideline, impressed with the start of Canberra and Steve Walters. Yes, yeah, Steve Walters has had a good start. As Gus pointed out, he's involved in the rate back and trying to uh, really get his troops going forward. He put on that big hit there on Jason Stevens for them to lose the football. So good start from him. Goulet almost striding out and offloading on the 40 metre line. Goldthorpe away for Felsch. Runs an angle, flicks it out the back. The scraps are there. Can St George get to them? Only just. No restart of the tackle count. Running away with Raper. Then for Coyne. Coyne trying to stand up. Mullins gets the pass. It's come off a hand. It was off Nandruku. So the knock on is against Canberra. They just look to be rushing a little bit, St George, in everything they do. They've made a decision to put Hardy to hooker and leave Nathan Brown on the bench early in the game. But I don't think it'll be long before David Waite gets him into the game. Maybe that uh, little change there is just unsettled their or organisation. And he'll be keen to get him on the field, I feel. It only did open up some space for Ricky Walford there, Mark Coyne. Had to get on the outside with his step of Brett Mullins. That forced Mandruku to come in off his wing. The pass that have found this man. Had some open space in front. Walford tackled 45 out centre field. His own territory. Mundine at dummy half. 
Now Goldthorpe belongs to Bartram. Really keeping in motion inside here for Brunker. Tries to put the foot down. And we're scrambling across Boyle and also Collins. Now Goldthorpe away for Mundine. Mundine, good ball for Stevens. Stevens, where's the support? It's in the shape of Walford. Ten metres out from the Raiders line. Walford had to stop to catch the ball. Now Coy. It comes for Mundine. He stands, he steps. Mundine around the corner. Play on for the Dragons, five metres out. Canberra, all hands on deck with Barnhill. Tries to steamroll his way through. Last tackle. Now the Dragons, Hardy back for Mundine. He grubbers. It's to the end goal, and Canberra get there. And now the chaser was all offside because Mundine was behind. It was very cool work there from John Lomax to clean up the kick and get the ball back into the field of play. A beautiful bus made there. I think it was David Wesley who didn't read the defence particularly well and came in allowing Jason Stevens to run into a hole. The player on the right of Anthony Mundine has been ruled to be offside. That was Felsch. Of course, the initial break by Bartram. That's the second time Bartram has been found running a daily out wide. Daly, although he's a 5'8", defends way out on the right-hand side at right centre. St George are keen for him to get his tackle count up. He, he tends to rest in defence and come to life and attack. That's the second time Bartram has actually gone through Daly in the game. Well, here's a forward pass straight from Dummy Half to Ponia. And it's on their own 20 metre line. So the mistakes continue. That one on the second tackle. No question about that one. From Walters to Ponia. Dean is standing on the blind side of this scrum. Goldthorpe to the open side with Coyne. And confronted by Nagus then Raper. And Raper able to keep it alive for Bell. Nice tackle from David Boyle. And the way here. Goulet then quick hands for Hardy. Hardy then for Stevens. The pass has gone past Bundy. Fielded by Phelps. Phelps off load. Stevens. Ten metres out from the line. Again, Canberra's defence really being put under pressure. Goldthorpe floats it there for Walker. Going nowhere. Mullins and Nandruku put paid to that challenge from Ricky Walker. Well, that's exactly what Canberra needed because at the moment they're just hanging on. They are making some very poor decisions in defence. John Lomax not coming up off the line with the rest of his teammates made it a very staggered. Canberra line, unfortunately, Nandruku and Brett Mullins were able to get Walford over the sideline just to settle things down. And the Raiders from their own 20. And Daly. And with Walters. His tackles, Canberra 6 to 2. As Hetherington makes ground through the centre, Barnhill went low to make the tackle. Raiders with Lomax. This has been a good set of six for Canberra. Almost a halfway. Now Stone. Long for Daly. Then for Ferner. There's the step. And then the match. Play of the match in the grand final. 94. Daly kicking here. Straight to Dean Raper. And back comes Dean Raper. And on the 30 metre line. 17 minutes gone in this second quarter. Quarter final. His knockout football as Ricky Walford from dummy half. The mix now off the field with Luke DeVico out there. Here's Mundine. DeVico involved in that tackle. Bartram from dummy half. Away from Stone. Wayne Bartram. Around Vegas. Then around Collins. Bartram will score. That is a sensational solo toy. Doesn't get any better. Wayne Bartram. Well, we mentioned early on that he had a great season, but you just can't believe what he has done in this one movement all on his own. Out of dummy half. Puts the step on. Stone falls off. Straight around Steve Wallace. Big holes in the defence. Nagus grabs. Another miss there. And good speed shown to outspeed David Boyle to score one of the best individual tries we have seen all year. St George have really been working on this lateral defence in the in the Canberra side. 
short little passes. Steppy runs around the dummy half area. have had them in trouble all day. They've given up probably three or four line breaks already. And Bartram, formerly a hooker, not unaccustomed to running from dummy half at the Gold Coast, has made a great fist at the back row for St George. To come up with a pearler there. Good footwork, left and right footstep, good awareness. Probably showed the way by Mundine in the previous play where he made a jinking run. In and the way there on Pongia. Now around Nagus, who was playing very shallow and a bad miss there from Collins, the winger. A great try. The poor formation of the Canberra defence was shown by the fact that with his initial step, when he stepped away from Stone and the, the Canberra front row, he should have been stepping into an outside defender coming in, but he'd stayed out on his man and there was a gap of seven or eight metres that he's gone straight through, Wayne Bartram. He still had plenty to do, and as Paul Gill points out, stepping off both the left and the right foot. It's all Wayne Bartram at the moment chance to great individual points and it, he's done so from 15 from touch Wayne Bartram having a superb day 8-2 the Dragons over the Raiders welcome back Qantas final series of the Optus Cup Wayne Bartram a try and two goals as St George leading by 8-2 and Goulet up to the 20 St George have been able to settle down perhaps a little quicker than Canberra they have that six-point margin as Brunkar from dummy half. Good metres from the winger. Colin Ward is on in 15 for Luke Felsch. The Goldthorpe away with Mundine. Then for Bartram. So busy. Ferner made that tackle. Oh, knock on from dummy half from Mundine. He was trying to take off out of that position with speed. We do see it so often in the modern game. The dummy half just trying to get out of that area a bit too quickly, loses his technique, takes his eye off the football. And amazing how many times you see a mistake made in the, the next set of six after points are scored, especially a try being scored. So Canberra, scrum win 30 metres out from the St George line and Nagus is up in the line. Scored four tries, two rounds ago against the Warriors. DeVico got through the first tackle. Made it all the way inside the 20. Now Walters inside Tomia. Ball and all from St George. Stevens was up there. Canberra with Stone. Then wide ball for Boyle. Boyle almost around Bell. Five out from the St George line. Collins here for DeVico. Stepping. Waters around the ankle. Last tackle for Canberra. First receiver is Walters. Throws a long ball almost in an intercept. It's with Daly. Daly passes forward. It will be a changeover. Well, he had to try and throw the pass. It was the last. Daly desperately trying to get a ball to an outside support player because it was about four on one outside. Was brilliant play by Laurie Daly. I mean, Goldthorpe raced out of the line. He didn't have much time to think. Probably not entitled to make the break he did, but just couldn't get the ball away on the outside. Just Canberra's play there, unlike what they've been in the past, a lot of settle in their game. Usually they like to string little plays together, two and three at a time. But this time, Davico, I think, had two hit-ups in that set of six in attacking areas, not like Canberra. Yeah, you don't see Luke Davico take a settler eight metres out there. No, very rarely for that side. St George with Brunker. Short of the 40-metre line. Now Barnhill. And straight there at Davico. Last here for St George, coming up out of the line of stone to put some pressure on Goldthorpe. And that's a good kick from Noel Goldthorpe, although the bounce sat up there for Nandruku. And runs into a coin. He tries out of this world last weekend from Noah Nandruku. Noel Goldthorpe's a player who likes to set his game up too. I mean, he's kicking deep on these occasions. He'll see that the Canberra wingers are dropping back earlier and earlier. I wouldn't be surprised before half-time if he changes that fifth tackle option to run the ball. Switch back to the short side. Stone working with Wesley. Waters pulled up in defence since coming on. Now Walters is away. Vico on halfway for Canberra. They trail by six, the Canberra Raiders. They started as slight favourites. Daly facing this kick. Going to attack Walford's wing. And Walford. Hit by Mullins. Now Mundine. 
head-to-head -head records between these two teams. Canberra very much in front in that category. The Dragons are on their own 40, and it opens up again. This time for Raper. There's no fullback at home for Canberra right now as Hardy turns inside for Mundine. Now Nagus is back. 41 metres out from the Raiders' line. Last tackle. Goldthorpe. Kicking again for the wing. That's out on the full. Three centimetres in it. Now Hetherington. Make like 10 metres. Stone, very busy, inside for Ferner. Hardy was waiting. All teams know that Canberra are very dangerous up the middle of the ruck. They like to run decoys. Stu Bollas, this occasion, does find some space in that area. A little bit of momentum now for the Green Machine as Laurie Daly takes the first pass. They're playing very flat the first receiver. Wesley, as he likes to do, running off the Daly pass. Ten metres out from the Dragons line. Last play with Daly. Kicking across here for the wing of Collins. Collins is getting through, but St George again has been able to defuse the situation. It was Brunker. Yeah, good take by Brunker. I'd like to just see whether Stu Collins was taken out in his attempt to get to where the football was coming down. Collins is very good under the high ball. There, Mark Bell pushes him out of the way. Very, very close to a penalty, that. Sterlow, just looking at this Canberra side earlier, I mean, week-to-week -week competition doesn't matter that much, but... They seem to be struggling without a Ricky Stewart, don't they, at first receiver? Well, that was always going to be the problem. They've done it in the finals before. Here's a good break for them again. St George making another error in their danger zone. Again, Laurie Daly very flat offloads. And on the attack is DeVico. There's been cries from both sets of supporters. A St George offside and then a, a call for a forward pass in the Canberra move. Daly away with Ferner. Ferner almost around the inside back for Mullins. He scores for Canberra. What a ball from Ferner. And Mullins posts the Canberra Raiders' first try. And in the last couple of minutes, St George have been their own worst enemy, coming up with mistakes in their own 30 or 40 metres. You can't give this football team possession for too long in your own danger area because they will score. David Ferner almost did it himself. A magnificent ball back in to Brett Mullins, who dives across. He's had few touches of the football in this game so far. One of his early touches is a timely one. But David Ferner, he does it all, throws the dummy. Both St George defenders couldn't wrap the football up. And that's a pretty good take for Mullins to go through the rape attack. He's very dangerous, that close to the line. This try was actually the first time they've got a ball player at second receiver in the opposition quarter, Canberra. And that's usually David Ferner. That David Ferner there is usually where Laurie Daly plays his game outside a halfback. But Laurie Daly spent a lot of time at first receiver. Finally got a player of Ferner's ball handling ability at second receiver and he was able to jink his way through they will probably be looking to play St George on the edges but Daly's been playing very very close to the play of the ball Steve Stone not commanding enough of the football uh, for Laurie Daly's liking well of course we saw early in the season Jason Ferris was in the halfback role for quite a while Steve Stone has been there for probably something like two months but I think it's been fairly obvious that Laurie Daly is just he's playing sort of a half and five eight role all in the one package Nine for touch 20 metres out, Ferner to level up, and the kickers are on song. David Ferner from wide out. It's 8 all. The Raiders and the Dragons will take a break. Welcome back. 8 all the score. The match of our final series. And in possession, 15 out from their own line. Mentioned at the top that Canberra had won their last four matches heading into this this clash today. Well, St George have lost only one of their last ten. And that was to the Cowboys at Cogra. And we certainly can't question their form as Simon Walford on in 16 and takes off for 10 metres. Yeah, they've done well again in this set of six here. Stu Ball is bursting through tackles now. Brett Hetherington had been a little bit quiet in the weeks coming up into the finals. He's really got done some good go forward work for them as Daly's kick bounces towards Brunker he takes on Collins can't beat him 23 tack 23 meters out from his own line and Mark Bell Steve Roach your impression of the St George defense 
Well, it's been a pretty poor performance, really, from Canberra early in this uh, first half. It's still it's eight points all at the moment. They haven't looked like breaking the St George line, and they're just giving the football back over and turnover. David Waite won't be very happy about that at half time and inviting Canberra back into the game. Barnhill up to halfway. He's still standing there. Barnhill back there for Mundine. Mundine gets the stepping. Mundine over the 30. Stepping inside. He's able to offload. No. He loses it at the end when he was trying to pass. Mullins, the Canberra hero. Well, it may have broken down at the end, but just the work from Anthony Mundine to get into the clear, this is poetry. Have a look at this. You will not see any better evasion than this. He turned them inside out. Beautiful stuff in between Ferner and Brett Mullins. He sidesteps on the one blade of grass six times, and Mullins, well, he showed the speed that he's got to recover and come up with the tackle to force the mistake. How fluid. It was still a try gone begging, that wasn't it? I mean, he had coin on the inside screaming for the ball. I doubt Mullins would have made up the ground as quick on him. It was a try gone begging for St George there. Very loose on the edges of the ruck, Canberra. They're, they're sort of big twixt in between whether to come up or stay back. St George really finding them out on the edges. I actually think the Canberra looked like when Anthony Mundy's got a football as a mistake made here. I mean, Nolan Andrew, or in fact it's Kenny Nagus getting involved. When Mundy's got the football, it looked like Canberra, they're sitting back waiting to see what he's going to do. And if you do that against Mundy, he'll be through your line before you realise it. Well, you go into a game looking to contain Anthony Mundy, but he doesn't get the ball generally as a 5-8 would. He's always getting it off a handoff or a short little offload, putting him in a broken play situation. Great opportunity for St George here. Brown is on for Hardy, and it's Mark Coyne tackle. 19 metres out from the Canberra line, and almost a second tackle. Just allows play to continue. Now with Thompson. She's 18 years of age, playing in the final series. Brown, away with Barnhill. Certainly dispelled any doubts about his fitness. Having a strong match, David Barnhill and is now hurt well, I think I've just stuck a pin into his goal I'll just take the edge off this set they're only five meters out what are you doing with the David Barnhill doll anyway Andrew he's gonna give it to block his kids actually we'll be off to the blood bin David Barnhill of course in the last round against Western Reds was replaced with an ankle injury had been in doubt all week intensive physiotherapy but a twist there has obviously sent the pain off again and he's going to limp from the field Scotty Goulet coming on to replace him we've had the report that there was some blood coming from his head I haven't seen the blood being called in fact it is a blood bin David Barnhill limps off Brown dummy half finds goal ball good strong defense out wide on Colin Ward. So St George 15 metres out. Brown. Now he kicks for the corner. Bell! Bell is there, has lost it. Canberra had the ball, but he'll call the mock on against St George. It was there if they could get to it. Terrific option early in the tackle count. I mean, it wasn't tackle five. They found Daly and Collins napping. Mark Bell couldn't get a handle on that ball. Collins able to clean it up. Again, Daly defending at right centre. They have spent a, a, a lot of their attack towards him, not playing as a normal 5-8 in defence. Shades of Mundine on this same day last year against Canterbury. Just little things like that. Near misses could cost them. Penalty here to Canberra. And just on Laurie Daly, he's done seven tackles in this game, which is only one less than John Lomax, who leads the Canberra tackle count. So Daly has done as much work as David Ferner and Brett Hetherington in that department. Well, it would be the Canberra plan that he's doing less tackles than all those types of fellas. That's why he defends where he does. They like to keep him as fresh as possible. Plus, it's a difficult area to defend too. The Dale is getting plenty of work in the defence and they'll be hoping that takes the steam out of him for his attacking role with the Canberra club. There's seven minutes remaining in this first half. Canberra right on the attack. They're 25 metres out. All this. Wolford at first receiver. There for Lomax. His second stint in the match. Back for Nagus. Almost opening up the St. George defence. Walford takes off. He's a good player. Simon Walford back for Walters. Then Nagus again. Five metres out from the Dragons line. He can cause your voice to rise, can't he? 
and he's a real superstar as Daly with the shortest of balls for Ferner he's lost the ball in the tackle how will Jeff rule he's ruled a knock on well Simon Wolford is doing a good job for Canberra he's getting into dummy half and allowing Steve Walters to, to take on a running forward role yeah, the ball just coming loose Lance Thompson with some attention over the top a lot of mistakes in this game considering the quality of the two football teams St. George, if they can win this scrum, the Canberra push. Jeffs wants it again. Well, that was their chance. You don't win one with a big push on the second feed of a scrum. Noel Goldthorpe will put this behind Wayne Bartram's foot. This time, successful for Dragons. Raper stepping. Steve Roach, the story on David Barnhill. Yeah, a couple of stitches. He's gone in for the back of his head. Uh, he'll be back in a little while. Dean again we put a glimpse of that stepping and weaving it's almost like a, a leap and a jump as the defense is up and Drew had to make a tackle out wide it's a 12-man defensive line at the moment David Ferner in some trouble 15 meters out from the St George line in fact he will come from the field now Brown working for Goulet and back for Brown quick hands Undine 35 out from the Canberra line They've used up five of their tackles. Brown, short on this blind side. If they want to run, Ward puts in a kick. It's gone past Nanduku, fielded by Nagus. Well, I think the option may have been to go through the hands. Here is Nanduku. And here's David Ferner to the bench. Tonya back out there now for Canberra. And again, St George have been caught inside the 10. You're always nervous playing against Canberra. I mean, these fellas, these backs, Nagus, Madruku, Mullins, they've just got the ability to slice into open space at any time. It's only You're only one offload away from a try. And they really keep your defence nervous at all times. Great kick there from Laurie Daly and a quick re restart by Noah and Andruku takes it 15 out. Penalty's now 7-3 against St. George. It's well for inside the yeah. Load. It was the opposite last week. They were caned in the penalty against the Crushers, the Canberra Raiders. Here's Lomax. Tackle. Low by Ward. Over the top was Brown. Away for Walford. Then Daly. They're up quickly again. Daly for Henrik. Stumbles into the tackle of Goulet. Still on. Daly. There it is. The try for Walford. Kenny Fawcett. He's lost it. St. George have covered up. Only just when Walford appeared to be over. He was over all right. He was hovering over the try line with the arm outstretched to put the ball down. But he was up very high. And it will be very interesting to have a look at this head on to see just what happens to the football. Defence coming across. Dean Rape was punched out by Adrian Brunker. How good has Wolford done? Wolford, he's certainly been involved. It's the one danger sign for St George. I mean, when the ball goes towards Laurie Daly, you've really got to defend to him to play the balls in a row. He'll instigate something on his play, and then he's very quick to get the first receiver or dummy half on the next one and knock it down your short side. Uh, when the ball goes to Daly, you've got to be alert for a couple of tackles in a row. Goulet. The middle line just behind Goulet is Goldthorpe. Here for Bartram. A great solo try that was for the Dragons, the first in this match. Undine caught at dummy half. Last tackle, Brown. They need a kick. It's the left foot of Brown that supplies. It's not a deep one. The bounce is awkward for Nagus. On his own 10 metre line. And he link up with Collins. He takes them on himself, Nagus. Barnhill back from the dressing rooms, but still on the bench. Canberra 15 inside their own half. Tommy up. It's been looking to pass that time. It works. Daly. Long ball here for Mullins. Mullins has got Nandruku. Nandruku up to the 20. Raper makes the tackle ball and all with Mundine. Now, can they regret the St. George defence? Daly. It's a bad pass from Dummy Hart. Daly makes the most of it. Back there for Wesley. Wesley for Walker. This is Lomax. Now with Dubico. And now the Dragons are able to assemble back on their own goal line. Last tackle for Canberra. Walters. 
Now Wolford kicking to the end goal. He's threaded it through. Davis is getting there. Raper has to bat a dead end goal. As we said earlier, they are one pass away from punishing you. A simple hit up from Quentin Congia back on his own quarter, able to unload the ball. Produced Daly and Mullins were down the left-hand side of the field. Madruku got in for a share. Nagus there on tackle five. Just when you think you've got them contained and they're not doing anything with the ball, one pass can change the whole complexion. He was going to score there, wasn't he? And Dean Raper has come up with a peculiar effort at the, at the last gasp to get his left hand out and push it over the dead ball line. Almost on half time now. Crucial that St George keep their line intact. They've got some nice set plays from these dropouts. You'll hit one or two in here and they'll have a little set play. Waters, if a boil. On all Bell doesn't make the tackle. Waters is back with it. Good paid to one defender. Locked up on the 20 metre line. Inside the final 60 seconds of the first half. Walford, long ball, Daly. Daly, the dummy! Pass Thompson! Inside for Vegas! And the cover defence has got there. Oh, Daly was through. Easy to say in retrospect, but I think Laurie had to take the last defender on. When you look inside at Nagus, the support player, there were two St George men there in attendance. Laurie Daly sliding through. Nagus coming across. There was both Noel Goldthorpe and Nathan Brown close enough to make the tackle. Doesn't look as though it will be a Canberra penalty. Well, the word is that Mark Coyne pulled a, a Canberra support player out of the action and has been penalised and that is the half-time siren you hear that's frustrating for st george i mean they're over the line had the ball punched out nagus very very close on the uh, on the kick through from wolford and now daly you're probably backing one-on-one -on -one with most people laurie daly but he tried to go the safe way to nagus nagus come up with the drop ball point has caused the penalty and they get a chance to go in at half time leading but I don't think that'll be good enough for, for coach Tim Sheens. He will have seen a few bomb chances there. David Ferner off the field for Canberra. Sheens in contemplation mode right at the moment. Laurie Daly will be the player having the shot at goal. There's Ferner right beside Tim Sheens. So eight all the score. Just one try apiece. Second of the finals. Cronulla already safely through to the second week. Being put paid to the, the stout-hearted challenge of Western Suburbs last night at Parramatta Stadium. The winner of this match to take on the loser of tomorrow's battle between the Sydney City Roosters and Manly. So Daly will have this kick. Only wondering what he would do out there. 15 metres out, Daly has hit the upright. It's bounced over the dead ball line. So at end of the first half, half a smile from Tim Sheens. This is the second quarter final. The Raiders and the Dragons locked at eight all. Knockout football on Channel 9. We'll take a break and come back with more. So Laurie Daly has us underway for the second half. And the Dragons with Rafer back for Barnhill. There were some close calls in the first half. Rafer provided one saving moment for the Dragons, beating Nagus to the ball in goal just before half time. That is Jason Stevens over the 20. Now Nathan Brown for Goldthorpe. And away for Bartram. Well contained by the Canberra defence. Tongia was first man in. Bartram doesn't get to his feet to play it, but. Jess has ruled the reason that happened was because of that man, Quentin Pongia. It's become a real art in the game of rugby league now, the quick play the ball. Certainly to get your side on a roll on or to force the referee into penalising and getting that extra set of six. Something has drilled into the players a hell of a lot of training. It's inside Canberra's half. Jason Stevens. Of course, on the other side of the coin, real art, the defensive team taught to roll the players that they've tackled onto their backs as much as possible to slow things down. And 
Good to see the referees are really clamping down on players coming in just to do that. As Anthony Mundine again finds some space around David Ferner and throws the ball over the sideline. Well, it was only a, a, a flicker of his, his amazing skills, but there it was again, Mundine standing up David Ferner. He's got the ability to make people miss, and in one breath where you're applauding his work, he does come up with some mistakes and some poor options on the other side of it. He's an extremely talented player. Of course, if St George bow out here, this will be his last game in the red and white, off to the Brisbane side next year. His Dragons defence coin Mundine on Mullins, just on Mundine too. Of course, we... He wax lyrical about his attacking skills, but his defensive record, the St George Club, armed us with plenty of stats today. He's actually fourth on the tackling list for the season. That's average of tackles per game. He's fourth on the list. Well, he's leading the tackle count this afternoon, I believe. He and Luke Felsch have both done 11 each. Of course, with the interchange, you see that the forwards rotate around a fair bit. Mundine doing plenty. Now Canberra. The penalty. There's been a lot of penalties in this game. Dan, it's a pretty hefty one against St George. 1-4 at the moment, they are down, so that must be some sort of worry. The stats from St George have Lance Thompson on top. He averages 25 tackles a game, and that's not bad because he started most of his time this year off the bench. Mundine, for the record, has 23 tackles a match. He's now Tomia standing. He's been able to offload a few times in this match. They're 25 metres out from the Dragons line. Stone pushes along. There's trouble here. It's more than trouble. Canberra over. Collins has scored for the Raiders. Now Jeffs consulted with the in-goal judge and then awards the try. But they caught the Dragons short. That's exactly what they did. And it was a very good option taken by Canberra. They got the penalty. That gave them some more possession. As we freeze play there, you can see that the pass across to the receiver put Steve Collins in open space. No cover defence coming across until it was too late. A simple run to the line, although Mark Bell does a pretty good job to get his hands on Collins, but the momentum taking him over, no promotion of the football. And it was Steve Stone who throws the pass, who pointed out that he hasn't been at first receiver a great deal, but that ball to David Boyle, who attracted two defenders, set the try up. I think the big option in this play, Sturlow, is that when they came two in from the tap kick, Daly lined up with three or four runners on the left-hand side of the field. Walters shaped to Daly, and the ball went back to Stone. St George were guilty of overreading the situation, didn't even up on the blind side, and Daly had attracted away too much defence to the open side of the field. Ferner drives this one towards the post and successful. David Ferner has made the margin six. We'll take a break. Welcome back. 14 points to eight. Only four minutes gone in the second half. Canberra, exactly the start they wanted. And this Raiders outfit, they threatened more than just one try in the first half. Maybe coming up with a four-pointer after the break. Ferner, he loves this ground, the Sydney Football Stadium. He loves finals. They're a team that thrive on confidence, Canberra. I mean, they really get into a groove. Once they get you for one try, if they start to get into a rhythm, they're very hard to contain. And that was a good set of six here and a nice safe kick downfield. It came from Walters. It's Raper. Been very impressed with Dean Raper's performance in the first 45 minutes of this game. He's had plenty to do. Good scrambling, desperation work. It's a good prospect for the St George team as Ricky Walford backslammed 32 metres out centre field. Nathan Brown. Adrian Brunk are coming in to relieve some pressure on his forwards. And Brown, back for Bartram. Making metres again. Tongia made the tackle. The Wolf has hardly had a bad game, has he, since coming into to first grade. It was round eight against Manly. And St George now inside Canberra's half. Last tackle. Back with Goldthorpe. He's got the option to run. Mundine. Now for Coy. Coy. Then to Walford and then over the sideline. Well, until the final pass went astray, it was good football from both teams. Bill pointed out earlier in the, the game that Noel Gold thought would take this option. And this play continued on through the match. And I thought Canberra did a pretty good job of, of recovering here. 
You see there that Nandruka came flying up. He needed to do that. The outside centre drifted across quickly as well and, and covered up a dangerous situation as Wallace takes it to the halfway line. Yeah, the athleticism in, the, the athleticism in their back line makes up for a lot of sins in their defence. Great speed and great ground coverage. Able to cover up holes out wide when they eventuate. I don't think that'll be the last time we see St George run that ball on tackle five. Daly with a short pass to Wesley. Jeffs has ruled St George again inside the 10. Disgusted as Anthony Mundine. They've got to be very tempted to kick for goal here. The six in front, eight would be a big psychological blow to St George. Well, I think Daly has just offered it to David Ferner. He was going for the line and then thought, hang on, I'll ask what David thinks. And he's got the confidence to think he can get it from 35 out. Well, I also think that their mentality is a little bit like the Brisbane Broncos at times when they get a penalty. They think attack, attack. Maybe it took a little while for Laurie Daly to look at the scoreboard, realise that they're a converted try in front, and if this one is successful, all of a sudden the opposition need to score twice. The funny thing about Brisbane, they had one in front last week against Auckland, and rather than go for the tap, they went for goal, and Willie Khan missed and didn't kick it dead from 15 out. So I think that is another reason why they take the tap. Ferner has this kick. He's 16 in from touch and 35 out. An eight-point lead. Ferner. This one is wide. They will get the ball back from the restart from the 20-meter line. First miss for the day for David Ferner. It's an important period of the game for St. George. They led 2-0, then they led 8-2. This is the first time they've found themselves behind in the contest. And they've really got to be patient. They've got to make sure that they are next to score. And that means being a positive with the ball, but also being very positive in defence. Werner inside for Wesley. Now 35 out from the St George line. Walters, good play the ball. Lomax, a dummy to Hetherington. Taken there by Ward. With Canberra creeping close and out of that danger zone. Walters for Stone, then Daly. Now Boyle, he's got Collins on the outside, it's a taste. Raper is back for St George. Now can he get to the field of play? Collins makes the tackle on Dean Raper. Well, Dean Raper, he wanted the ball, willing the ball to go over the dead ball line. He probably didn't realise that he had a little bit more time than what he actually thought. As Boyle put the kick through deliberately for Collins. He got a checkered run. He could have allowed it to bounce once more time, one more time, and that could have taken it out of play. But in the end, discretion was the better part of Valor. I don't think there's any doubt that Tim Sheens has spoken to his halfback, Steve Stone, and said, let's get Laurie Dudley a little wider. Having a far more active role in the second half, Steve Stone, than what he did in the first half. So gold for it. That one as far as Nandruku from the 30-metre line. Quite picked up in the tackle of Stevens. Nandruku was able to stay on his feet. Now Lomax tries to punish his way through Goulet. 15 out from the line. Walters for Stone inside Hetherington. Now Ferner. They don't open up. Ward was there to, to plug any hole. Play forward by Ferner. Oh, it's a great tackle, Dean Raper. A much smaller man than David Ferner, and he's forced a mistake as well. He's not only saved the try, but forced the mistake. That could be a very big play in this second quarter final. Very strong player, David Ferner. Strong in the legs. Great work there by Raper. really under fire since half time they've conceded six points it's the margin they trail by as Mundina's shut down there by Boyle well I think it's as simple as if Canberra are the next point scorers Andrew they win the game that's how important it is for St George to, to make sure they keep their line intact and don't give away silly penalties well that's the thing about this game it is sudden death I mean with 29 minutes to go at some stage of this second half, the season is going to flash before the eyes on the side behind on the scoreboard. And that's where they've really got to be able to concentrate. Now 10 short of halfway, the Dragons have worked their way out of trouble on this set of six. Brown, the left footer. He's turned Collins around. Now will he get the bounce he wanted? He doesn't. Collins, good young winger. Canberra back in possession, 25 metres out from their own line. Collins this time last year was in the President's Cup side that won the grand final against Manly. Here's a drop ball from Canberra. Stevens has forced the error in the tackle. There's a pat from David Barnhill. 
It was Ken Nagus. Watch it again. Stevens is there. Oh, excellent in the tackle. And he gets a breather for St George. In a position to attack Mundine. They're up quickly. Back for Raper. He ducks under Mullins. Raper steps inside Burner. Now Walford. 25 metres out. Ricky Walford does his best. Tackled by Noah and Vuku. Here is Bartram. Bartram away from Lomax. Almost away from Hetherington. Quick hands. Goal ball. There it is. Forward ball on the Rucker. And caught forward by Jeeves. Well, I tend to blame the, the support player when forward passing is thrown. Well, on that occasion, it took a long time for the ball to get to, to Mark Bell. And he did double pump to a certain degree. But I think if the winger, you've got to be way back and coming in on the fly. And Adrian Brunker just didn't time his, his run well. And the pass was a poor one from Bell. Yeah, although it was poor play by St George, Bartram waited for a long time for support to come up on the outside. They could have actually gone through Canberra there without having to push the pass to go around them had the support been a little earlier. Canberra. Stein, their turn had a problem. They've lost it. Jeff says not knocked out of the hands. St George with a chance. You cannot believe the ball, ball, poor ball handling in this game. And now Coyne stepping away from Daly. Back in field, 10 metres out from the line. This is the Dragons' chance. As Coyne lost it when he got to his feet. Now for Barnhill. Barnhill takes them on. Taken in the tackle of Ferner. They're five metres out. And Nathan Brown with it is Ward. Colin Ward. Held up on the goal line by the Canberra defence. Can they set themselves for a play on the left? Brown pushes wide here for Mundine. Now Goldthorpe. They rush to Goldthorpe. Goldthorpe around the corner and intercepted by Boyle. Well, I think we'll find a penalty going against Canberra here for impeding one of the support players outside Noel Goldthorpe. A concern Tim Shoes looking on. Noel Goldthorpe doing what Laurie Daly did in the first half. Taking the ball under pressure. The defence flying up and then scything through, and David Boyer will be penalised. Philosophy St George have got to take the kick here. There's a couple of their injured stars, Ricky Stewart and Jason Croker looking on. Some chance that Croker may be involved in the final series if Canberra can stay alive for a couple of weeks. St George had good ball there from a turnover from Canberra. They dropped yet another one, yet they came up with three settles in a row. That allowed Canberra to regroup and really rush and put some pressure on them there in defence. Goldthorpe did well to get away. But both sides, a little disorganised in the opposition quarter. They're really settling the ball up too much rather than getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers and playing the game on the run. A Brisbane Broncos, a Langer or a Taylor would have handled three or four times in that movement by the time this tackle had come about. Yeah, David Boyle has grabbed hold of Dean Raper. There's Boyle. He actually comes back and takes the intercept. It was a good decision. It was a good call from the touch judge helping out the referee. I well, suppose without being too harsh against these sides, with the fact that their ball handling is very suspect at the moment, maybe the reason they are taking some settlers is, is that very fact. It'd be nice to maybe get a couple of sets of six where you, you don't throw that many passes just to get a bit of momentum with the fact that you're not spilling the football. It becomes a catch-22. Just on something I said earlier, I mean, St George have achieved their first objective here if Bartram can kick this goal. They've actually got themselves uh, within the four points of, of Canberra. They've been next to score. That'll be a confidence boost for them. 25 minutes to go in the game. And that hopefully will make Canberra a little nervous. Canberra are the sort of side, if they get six or eight points in front of you, they really start to open up and punish, and it can be very draining on your energy in chasing them around the field. But this will keep them a little nervous and edge St George a little closer. Eight points is the tally for the day for Wayne Bartram. And now ten points, and that is the tally of St. George. So it's a four-point ball game. We'll take a break. The Raiders 14, the Dragons 10. For the action here at the Sydney Football Stadium, we're approaching the halfway mark of a big weekend of football. St. George, they trail Canberra by four points. Key moments in this match as Ward gets it back to the 20 to head her off back in the tackle of Boyle. Let's take a sideline comment from Steve Roach. Well, it must be frustrating for coach David Waite to be watching this. All they're doing is inviting, and again they do. There's a forward pass from Dummy Hart inviting Canberra back into this game. And uh, David Barnhill, the one who's been injured all week, 
I think he's been inspirational for St George. He's the only one out there that's talking at the moment. And I'd, I'd like to know how many tackles he's made or desperate tackles that he has done. After the leaders in the St George tackle count. And here is a great chance for Canberra. Outside the Dragons 20. Stone away for Daly. Daly stepping. Got through a grab of Dean Raper. Stone again for Ferner. Inside for Wesley. And Wesley is there and takes them with him. David Wesley still going. Got through three defenders. He meets his match at the end of it. The drive from Brown and Stevens. Walters. Lomax. Now Daly. Here is a angle back inside from Ferner. And then has had the ball reefed. Has he knows his Jeffs? St George will get the scrum feed. That could be a big call. Well, David Ferner was the man who lost the football at the other end of the field, giving St George possession. On that occasion, he claimed that the ball had been batted out. This time, he is absolutely livid because he believes he's been gutted twice. Be difficult to pick up whether there was a St George hand in there. Great anomaly in that set of six there when they drove Wesley back some 15 metres in defence. Referee obviously allowing Clay to go on because the defenders were doing a good job. If that was near a sideline, he'd have been screaming out, held, held. And if they'd have pushed him into touch, they'd have given a penalty. Referees aren't consistent in that area right across the board. It's now with Colin Wall. On the 40-metre line, Wesley is there. Wrestling tackle. Brown. Well, that's almost forward to Stevens from dummy half. Certainly flirt with danger around that dummy half area. They're really trying to hit that ball on the advantage line. That's where they've come up with a couple of forward passes. Stevens in a lot of trouble after that tackle too. He was met by both Lomax and Hetherington and a lot of pain. Jason Stevens. Time out from referee Kelvin Jeffs. And that too goes at him. He went down very quick in the tackle. Well, he's gone there. He's gone before Hedrington came in as the second man to the tackle. So Jason Stevens leaves the arena and we'll take a break with Canberra leading the Dragons by four. Second quarter final. 21 minutes remaining. That kick from Brown. It bounces once and into touch. You've been just a little lucky. I'll tell you what, it was very lucky for Stephen Collins that the ball didn't bounce back and back in field. So I think he was in a position to catch this on the full. And really it was the St George chasers who were leading the rest of the players. Fortunately the ball bounced just in the field of play and over the sideline. Canberra win the scrum now. Nagus up from fullback tackled. 25 metres out in the centre of the field. 14-10. Canberra leading, Turner inside, oh, they were waiting. Felsch and Bell. That's him that is inside their own half. And a slow play, the ball coming from Walters. He was hurting that tackle as Lomax inside. Hetherington able to break the line. And was that a knock on a dummy half? Walters will make as much as he can out of it. Daly, quick hands on for Boyle. Boyle has Collins on the outside. Though the cover up there was Bartram and Goldthorpe. Last tackle for the Raiders. It's with Daly. Daly in two minds. Then the pass. It's with Tonya. They've been trapped in possession. It'll be a changeover now. It's on. Tonya and Barnhill. A flurry of left and right. There, Pongia. He reacted to the tackle of David Barnhill. It was a crunching one over the top on the last tackle. Those fairly fiery players. Beautiful hands leading up to that from both John Lomax and Laurie Daly. And obviously Pongia will be in the blood bin very shortly. And they want to go on with it. No love lost between them. I can tell you if the players didn't intervene there, these two would go on for a week. It was a good tackle over the top. And I think Pongia just out of frustration. Now, oh, a little one there from Barnell. Yeah, but again, they were... But the tackle was a good one. The little nudge was nothing. It was enough to sit... Pongier off and of course he was one of the players sent off in, in the early round where these two clubs met arms everywhere not too many landing 
Tongi off to the blood bin. And St. George get the penalty. But that was a last tackle play for Canberra. They will be bitterly disappointed that they couldn't make something off it just outside the Dragons 20. In the double whammy, they concede a penalty. So Colin Ward it is from the free kick, and Lomax comes over the top. Nathan Brown here for Felsch. Hitting hard. It's inside Canberra's half. And now for Goldthorpe. Thompson on his outside. He cuts him out and picks out Bartram. Canberra's defence shuffling across Mundine. And he stand them up. Not that time. Daly was the tackler. Brown. This time Thompson gets a chance. They came up a little high. That was DeVico. Last tackle for St George. Goldfall. They try the high ball. Now, who wants it? Andruko or Nagus? It's Nagus at the back. The kicker of the football was getting through to make sure the chasers are onside. Coyne and Walford made the tackle. Interesting with Brett Mullins redoubted as one of the best fullbacks in the world that Ken Nagus is playing in the number one. Tim Sheen's shown a lot of confidence in him. Likes the way he can attack from general play there. And certainly under the high ball appears to be safe today. Well, they've muscled up in defence here, St George. That's four gone already. This is exactly what the Raiders needed. Steve Wallace to pick up some quality yards because they were struggling to get out of there. Now Stone kicking on the last tackle. Goes one bounce to Dean Raper. And Raper with a bit of space. Can he get it back to halfway? Dudley is first there. Well, that's for years where Canberra have had the luxury of Ricky Stewart. I mean, that kick and chase has got them back to the 50. But with Ricky Stewart, they'd have been way down in the opposition quarter. And now St. George, simply on kick reception, on third tackle or inside the 40, and in great position to attack. Ricky Stewart. No motion from him, Luke Felsch. Lomax is there with Hetherington. They're 30 metres out from the Canberra line, and they trail by four. Nathan Brown away for Goldthorpe. Show of the ball to Ward. Here is Coyne. Mullins is there. It affects the tackle. And that is five for St. George. Goldthorpe was a high ball from Bartram. Now Goldthorpe kicks across. There's pressure on young Collins. There's not too many crabs around him, but Collins is able to take the ball. But he wasn't getting much protection. There was only Laurie Daly there. Tim Sheens rates him the best high ball catcher in the club, right in front of Nagus and Mullins, so there was never any pressure there for him. St. George very flat in attack. They're a side that like to stand up in attack and just push little passes, hoping someone can jink through, whereas they're not coming on with the ball with any depth. And now that's Menando with a bandage swathed around the forehead. And a good play, the ball, Wolford for Boyle. 35 metres out. This time it's the last for Canberra. Stone. He'll try the high ball. Raper will be called into the action. Now, who's chasing through? Raper is equal to. Some great young talent under the high ball. Raper, that time. If you have a look at where Steve Stone kicked the football, the whole Canberra chasing team were back in a back line formation. They were never, ever going to get through and put any pressure on the, the taker of the football, Dean Raper. So I think that was just a pretty simple handover of possession, really. Steve Roach on the sideline. What's the story on Jason Stevens? Yeah, Jason Stevens has a knee injury. It's the same one that's plagued him all season. He won't be back. There's a turnover again. And Mando is with it for Canberra. Yeah, again, another mistake around Mundine. Does do a lot of good things, but Tissy puts some pressure on his team. Two and a half minutes remaining. Into the blind side. Ferner running at Mundine. It's inside the 20. This could be a crucial set of six for the St. George cause if they can stay in touch. Stone inside for Hetherington. They're able to hold him up and push him back a few metres. It was Lance Thompson. Walford takes off again. Daly tries to ignite the Canberra machine. Now Mamando back with Vegas. Five metres out from the line. Coyne was there to make the tackle. I think they need to go to the goal area. Get another set of six. Daly will call the shots. He kicks. Mullins is coming through. Mullins goes high and misses. Canberra claim a try, but it's a knock on. Well, Mullins had the leap and came down without the football. There's another bad side for Canberra. With Luke Tavico down. It's in the shoulder. Not another injury for them, surely. And but Mullins has been through the fingertips. 
St George now taken out of their own area. Mundine came up with the football eventually. Lance Thompson, a good charge. Stepping back towards the centre of the ruck. The arms of Mullins were like one big basketball hoop. It's most unlike Mullins in that situation. He had the lead. The ball went straight through the arms and now St George get a penalty. So they're quickly out of trouble. <laughs> uh, it's, I think it's an even up here. I think you find that Quentin Pongia gave David Barnhill a little bit of a going over and I'm sure the message has come out to Quentin Pongia just to not get personal out there. Yeah, that, it's just a cheap shot, not needed, very personal, the kind of things that you don't come up with at this end of the season. Well, not 13 minutes from the end in a sudden their semi-final, you know. Goal for Way here for Hardy. Crowd this afternoon for the second of the quarters final series. 28,185. Bartram is the player with the ball for St George. There's been only three tries in this match. One of them was from Bartram. Gold ball. Working here with Hardy. Hardy. Then on for Felsch. He was wrapped up and lost the football. It wasn't a great pass from Jeff Hardy. He put Felsch under all sorts of pressure. Quick recovery from Luke DeVico. St George have had real value today running from dumbing half and hitting up around the play the ball area and the times they have gone wide Canberra put a lot of pressure on their attack and they've come up with loose balls I think David way to prefer that if Bartram and Mundine and these fellas just jink their way around the dummy half area and hope to promote the football into space when they send the ball wide they're really not deep enough to cause Canberra any trouble at the moment really threatening that time and Jason Burnham out there for Canberra number 18 this tackle, Wolford, Daly, kicking down the centre. Can he get it to the end goal? He can't. With Brunker now for St George. A few kicks today they'd like over again. Boyle and Collins were there to make the tackle. Thompson makes good metres. Brown skipping out Felsch with a pass here. Is trouble if Mundine can get away. It's back for Coyne. Coyne comes back in field for the Dragons. They've done well getting away from their own 20 today, the St George side on most occasions. Here is Felsch, stepping now inside Canberra's half. Amando was the tackler. Mundine, he takes off from dummy half. Mundine, he got past two. That's where they've got to play. Straight through the centre, a sloppy play the ball. Gunthorpe, it's the last tackle. Kicking across, the chase of the wrong side. Canberra come down with a football. It is Laurie Daly. Uh, he puts himself where he needs to be, Laurie Daly. He wants to be where the football is. He took the kick off to start the game. And he may not take a more crucial catch of the football than this one here. Steve Collins was outside him. Mark Bell was there. We saw the tap from, from Bell onto the head of Daly. Former teammates. Well, there was a forward oh, no. pass from Dummy Hart. Well, last night we saw the game change with seven minutes to go. Western Suburbs, they had the lead until then. Only four points in this game coming into the last ten minutes. Will it be the same story for St George? Well, I think the run from Mundine has got to wait in St George up to where they can where they can get this Canberra side. Bartram, Brown, Mundine, Goldthorpe. All around close to the ruck, working over these forwards. That's where they've had success. 12 minutes to go, 10 minutes to go. They need to try to stay in this competition. And what about the battle? Mundine and Daly, they're meeting again, head-to-head. -head. Quinn is now on in 17. Daly's still being the best player on the field. This Quinn replacing Ricky Walford has pushed Bell out onto the wing. The Dragons are 15 metres out from the Canberra line. 10 minutes remaining. They trail by four as Raper takes off. Edrington is there with Lomax. Down there. And dummy half. He tries to spin. And Boyle. He hasn't missed a tackle today. Last here for St George. Mundine with a grubber kick. He stumbled on the way through. Nagus comes back. It wasn't a stumble. He was impeded and Jeffs has given the penalty. Well, here's an interesting decision. Ten yeah. to go. Don't get a rush of the blood here. Let's just kick the goal and come back again. Well, good luck. Well, I think they figure they still have to score a try if they're behind by two. They're going to have a go. Brown, back with Goldthorpe. Goldthorpe, taken in the tackle of Burnham. 
eight metres out from the line. Sudden death. The next nine minutes to decide who will bow out. Filch. So dare I use the phrase extra time. That is still a real chance. Brown is gone. It goes for Mundine from dummy half. Now for Coyne. Then for Bell. And Bell has scored for the Dragons. The mousetrap play from dummy half. And Mark Bell has scored in the corner. Yeah, what about that? Is the mousetrap legal? I would have thought that the, the attacking side have got to have their, their players back. They've got two dummy halves on this occasion. I don't want to put cold water on the try because it's a well-worked move. He's got no right to be there. And Beautiful. used the referee very, very well. And Mundine, he attracted two defenders. Bruce Bermando, who'd been caught out wide for quite a while for Canberra, trying to come up with the tackle. It is a mousetrap play for the game. Is it legal? Mundine gliding across the field. He takes on DeVico. Getting on the outside of DeVico and that forced Brett Mullins to come in. Beautiful work from Coyne. Catches and passes with the attention of Nandruku. And Mark Bell, a prolific try scorer for whatever club he's playing at, gets the try. Wayne Bartram, he's hit the ball sweetly today. They won't get any tougher than this. On the wrong side also for a right foot kicker. Next Canberra player, Mark Bell. That's what Tony Mundine can do to you. He was able to threaten to get around DeVico and Mullins just couldn't trust that DeVico was going to make up his ground on the little 5'8". Forced to come in late, that created the space on the outside. I thought the kicker goal was probably the right option. There was still 10 minutes to go on the clock and one try would win you the game. But now they've given a Bartram a chance to edge them in front with only eight minutes remaining. But again, it came from the little men around the dummy half area. We spoke about it just briefly before. Mundine, Brown worked the little play, caught the Canberra forwards napping. And he was able to threaten the outside backs and get some space out wide. Well, Blocky is sitting right behind Wayne Bartram here. How skinny do the, the goalposts look from where you're saying that? <laughs> oh, it's a bit easier from where I am, but uh, the breeze is right behind Wayne Bartram. I'd say that he would aim to the left of the upright. I'm a goal kicking expert now. <laughs> goal kickers love this. They love this pressure and they love this is the kick they wait for. All their career, I'll think about trying to win a game in the dying moments. 21 out, Bartram is swinging in, Wayne Bartram! He landed it from the sideline. The Dragons, they lead by two, and Wayne Bartram is having one of his best kicking days of the season. Oh. What a day to have it! And here's the try being set up. It's a planned move. The markers did work. Mundu gliding across, Mullins in, Bell scores the try, Steve Roach has got the goal kicker aiming outside the left hand post, it's come back beautifully from the right hand post, and I guess that, yeah, if you are a goal kicker, you don't mind them from the sideline because many people expect you to, to miss, probably the harder ones, the ones close to the posts. The red and white arming has gone into a frenzy here, there behind the post at the opposite end of the field to where Bartram kicked the goal. Lance Thompson now six minutes remaining it's the Dragons in front by two Dunham. taken in the tackle of Boyle it's been a good set of 6-2 after coming up with that converted try Brown on the last the kick has ricocheted off the legs no restart of the tackle count Brown gets a second in quick time this is Collins for Canberra taken in the tackle of Felsch and Hardy Wolford is back Agus, Agus, up to the 30 metre line. The Canberra Raiders are staring down the barrel right now. DeVico makes five metres on the play. Walters, here it is with Wesley. Gets it up to halfway and just beyond. Barnhill was first man in with Brown. Walters away with Lomax and Daly. Daly then for Boyle. Boyle back for Daly. And Brunker had come in off his wing to make a very important tackle. It is the last for Canberra. And kicking from dummy half as well, but it was charged down and St George have possession. Well, Canberra, they've come past any number of hurdles this year with injured players. They went into this match as favourites. And right now they're looking at an exit. Mundine has with it for St George. We'd have a very anxious Ricky Stewart down on the sideline watching this. He's watched Canberra take up no field position in this second half, even though they were six points in front. It's not often Canberra will lead in the semi-final and be beaten. And Ricky Stewart 
that leg will be feeling a little sore now that he's not out there to help to get canvas and field position up the other end St. George they're on halfway Brown all forward had a lunge Goldthorpe kicking that's a good kick the bounce though again held up Andruku he's been very quite really knowing Andruku today he's on the 30 meter line Nagus away with Mullins 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 here's a chance for Canberra no support for Mullins he broke through one off the ruck Canberra now inside St George territory Walters here is Daly Daly long ball for Boyle Boyle can't get through the tackle of both Quinn and Bronca they're now 25 meters out Canberra trailing by two points inside ball for Lomax Lomax is held up in the Thompson tackle now up to the 20. I've got Nandruku down hurt as Walters! Walters from Dummy Half has made 15 metres. Last tackle, Nandruku is going from the field. It comes for Daly. He kicks into the legs of Brown and St George have come up with a football. Will that be their last chance, Canberra? Mundine is with it for St George. Both sides playing with a real lot of urgency now. Daly hardly touched that ball through that whole set of six. You're two points in front in the Sudden Death semi-final, three minutes to go. If there's any side you don't want to be playing, it's Canberra. They can hurt you from anywhere on the football field. And with Nandruku off, Jason Burnham is slotted into the left wing right at the moment. St George in the last tackle. Brown. Using Goldthorpe as the kicking option. He kicks to Burnham. It's gone straight through his grasp. It's back for Nagus. Almost so casually bent down to pick up the ball and now he lopes through the 15 metres. The very distinctive running style of Nagus. Walters pushes here for Daly. Daly going across the ball. Can't get the pass away. That was a key tackle from Quinn. Daly inside it comes with Mamanda. 38 metres out from the Dragons line. Two and a half minutes remaining. Walters full of running for Canberra. Uh, I'd be disappointed the support didn't go with him. All for the dummy half. Daly, what can he do for Canberra? He serves a pass up for Ferner. Then back for Daly. Held up in the traffic jam of St George defenders. Last tackle, Walford. Back there for Lomax. The last man you want to have the football on the last play. He loses the football. St George again will come out of trouble. Two minutes, 12 left on the clock. The season for both these sides come down to two minutes. One set of sets each. St. George to get out of trouble and Canberra to come back to force the winner. St. George right now. Poor old John Lomax. Ended up with the ball on the last tackle. Well, Laurie Daly was playing the football. That was the problem for Canberra. Nobody got in a position to take on the responsibility. Lance Thompson, a spin. Tackled by Mamanda. For St George, it's one good kick and chase. They've got to try and find the line. They've got to try and wear down the clock. They must find the line with their kick. They must put some, they must put Canberra in a set play situation from a scrum. They don't want broken field play. It gets down to one good execution of a kick and a good set of six defence. They go on. Felsh it is. On the ground by David Boyle. Tackle number five for St George. Brown has had all the kicking down that left side that one Collins is there will look for Nagus he's trapped by the chasers well that's the chase they wanted Chris Quinn his entry he's certainly given it 100% Nagus 15 inside their own half Canberra it's coming up to full time and it will be full time for the Raiders as Daly was taken high by Bartram well they've got to kick the touch as quickly as they can and get going 59 seconds left on the clock, on the scoreboard. One set of six for Canberra to keep their season going. So 40 metres out from the St George line. They start with a hit up from Lomax. Lomax gets it to the 30 metre line. I was tackled, I dropped the ball and played the opposition script it. Walters, here it is with DeVico. DeVico now to the 20. Canberra, look for Daly. He's to the left side of the ruck. Walters advances another 10. They're now eight metres out from the line. They've done a little more than hit it up. St George, can they absorb the pressure? Inside they try. 20 seconds. Felch came over the top. 
with Dean Raper. They're all in the front line. Daly kicks. It's the last throw of the dice, and Bell is better than dead in goal. We'll never get a more important touch of the football in his career, Mark Bell. He scored the winning try for St George, and he saved it at the other end. It's all over. The countdown has started. The siren will sound, and Canberra are out. St George has survived the first week of the finals. The Red and White Army almost in disbelief. And Tim Sheens, we should reflect, his last match as coach for Canberra. St George have got up by two. Mark Bell supplied the match-winning try. The goal to Bartram from the sideline. And they are through to live another day. We'll take a break from the Sydney Football Stadium. Dramatic finish, St George 16, Canberra 14. Steve Roach will have the office man of the match. And Peter and Phil to wrap things up.